When dealing with live tech news, remember, always wear protective equipment. We don't, but we're professionals. We're raw dog and light, baby. <laughs> it's dangerous. Microsoft has announced that Xbox Series X slash S and Xbox One consoles now support voice chat integration with Discord after the tech giant failed to acquire the popular chat platform back in 2021. It was a swing and a miss. At a big net, it doesn't always work. There are some caveats though. Discord voice chat is only available to Xbox insiders. So you'll have to be okay with installing early versions of software, which so far require you to go through a complicated first time setup involving multiple Discord session handoffs between your phone and console. Things probably would have been smoother if Microsoft's acquisition went through, but what, should we just let them buy anything? If it'll run better? This keeps all the lame people off. The announcement makes Xbox as the first consoles to support direct voice chat integration with Discord, even though they announced a partnership with Sony last year, right after turning down Microsoft's offer, and said there would be some kind of PlayStation integration in early 2022. <laughs> I'd be mad, but Sony keeps making awesome exclusive games and bringing them to PC, so if that's what they want to focus on, I'm fine with that. I also don't have a PS5, so. Speaking of consoles, you might want to check that yours isn't melting as summer heat waves batter parts of the globe. Nintendo and Valve have both issued warnings to owners of the Switch and Steam Deck, respectively, to avoid gaming in temperatures over 35 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, you might experience a different kind of steam. Head steam. <laughs> I was thinking of the plastic, but <laughs> it's very poisonous. The warnings are appropriate, given that it's been over 35 degrees in Tokyo for five days straight in the country's worst heat wave ever documented, while record-breaking temperatures also afflict the EU and UK, causing Google and Oracle servers to overheat and two British airports to shut down because their runways are frickin' melting. While there isn't anything you can do immediately to stop the heat, other than recycling your soda cans, of course, it'll help. You could also pull a Linus Tech Dips and slap a heatsink on the back of your Switch or Steam Deck. Or Grandma. Or anyone. And Elon Musk has experienced another setback completely unrelated to Twitter. Thank God, because I'm tired of talking about that. Synchron has become the first company to implant a brain-computer interface into a U.S. patient, beating Musk's competing company, Neuralink, to the punch. Synchron's Stentrode system involves implanting a wire lace in the patient's brain by pushing it up through a blood vessel, meaning no invasive surgery is required, unlike existing prototypes where research participants have a big doohickey sticking out of their head. Have you ever seen those, James? Neuralink is actually called the Stentrode. <laughs> Synchron has already implanted stentrodes in four Australian patients, but received FDA approval to do the same in the US back in July 2021. Meanwhile, Neuralink hasn't even begun human trials, <laughs> which is which is probably what, good. What, are they monkeying around? Uh, honestly, this is probably good. I think it's okay to take it slow with the whole cyborgification thing. We have a lot of problems to deal with already before we add in that. You know, let's figure things out. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by XSplit, the trusted live streaming and recording software for gaming, presentations, live events, hot dog competitions, regular dog competitions, you name it. XSplit's got it all. Broadcaster, the all-in-one streaming and recording solution. Connect Webcam, which lets you use your phone as a webcam. Presenter, for adding personality, flair, and interactivity to your stream. Capture, which lets you annotate and add voiceover to shareable images and video clips. And Vcam, a virtual background tool. Get everything you need to make awesome streams and use code Linus at the link below to save 10% today. Oh, have you ever seen quick bits that are going by this quickly? Oh. Yeah. Ludicrously high refresh rates are making their way from desktop monitors to gaming laptops. Alienware just announced new notebooks with 1080p panels that can reach a blistering 480 hertz. You don't need that. You do, you do not. Thank you, James. It's an optional $300 upgrade for the AMD-powered M17R5 or the Intel-powered X17R2, which might be as hard to justify as those model names. What do they mean? Did they just pick letters and numbers out of a hat? M15R8. That one's next year's. After killing Google Wallet and replacing it with Google Pay, Google is releasing a new Google Wallet to replace Google Pay. Yay! <laughs> In addition to credit, debit, and membership cards, Wallet adds support for transit and event tickets, boarding passes, vaccination records, virtual car keys, and student IDs. Look for the update now, and look for another update in a couple years, reversing everything again. What, do you want to use the same app forever? It's time for you to switch it up. Dolly 2, the text-to-image generator developed by OpenAI and the source of manifold internet memes will be made available to a million people currently on the waitlist in the coming weeks. 
Those lucky few will be able to generate 50 free images in the first month and 15 every following month. This is great, but also entirely unfair. So only a select few will have ultimate meme power? This is meme elitism. Sign my petition to add a right to meme in the constitution and put OpenAI in jail. Microsoft has announced Viva Engage, a new social platform inside its team chat app that looks almost exactly like Facebook. There's a news feed with text, image, and video posts and personal profiles that are like, look, look at that, that's Facebook. I don't think Microsoft understands that Facebook's growth is declining because people don't like Facebook. They're like the people who pick up litter and bring it back to you. You dropped this. You didn't mean to, I'm sure. And listen up, Canadians who may have bought an optical disc drive between 2004 and 2010, you could get 20 bucks without a proof of purchase. Thanks to a $29.7 million settlement in a class action lawsuit brought against large electronic manufacturers like Sony, Philips, Panasonic, BenQ, and more. The companies were accused of price fixing on optical drives, so the least they could do is give you some money for some double doubles and gimbits. See you there. I never understand why these are a thing. And the least we could do is tell you to come back on Friday for more tech news because again, we are the only people qualified to handle it. We go through rigorous training. Here's the, see, see, I wouldn't have been able to, ah!